uh, in the previous session we discuss about the multiple regression analysis ANOVA table and uh, how to conduct uh, hypothesis testing using this extra sum of square concepts concept so we can uh, uh, now in that case uh, we have a reduced model and we had we have a full model and the reduced model should be nested in the full model and then we can take the extra sum of squares and we use in that f statistic we can do the calculation so same concept we can use to test whether a subset of regression coefficients are equal to zero or not right in this case now what we can do is now for an example let's say you have one response variable y and you have another let's say you have 10 independent variables and we are supposed to fit the best regression model using this variable so in that case we have to decide whether we are going to uh, whether we are going to formulate our best fitted model with the use of all 10 independent variables or we are going to select a subset of these independent variables. So in that case when we use this method in order to find what are the most important independent variables that we can use to predict our model or to formulate our model right it will uh, provide us with the good uh, description of the process that we studied and then we know these are the most important variable so these variables that we can just uh, keep them in a side uh, we don't have it's not a must to use them in the prediction so likewise we can get into some important um, decisions when we uh, find out the important variables in the multiple linear regression so in that case we can use this uh, extra sum of squares concept in order to uh, uh, extra sum of squares concept in order to do this uh, in order to uh, conduct this uh, hypothesis now for an example let's say you have six number of uh, various six number of independent variables that is x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 so in that case if you write your full model your full model would be uh, y equal beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 uh, plus beta 4 x4 plus uh, beta 5 x5 plus beta 6x6 six six plus the error that would be your full model but let's say that we have found uh, a reduced model like this where you have your response variable y and then we have beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 3 x3 plus the error term so in this case we can see as the independent variables we have only x1 and x3 so we are left with x, uh, x2, x4, x5 and x6. So in this case actually we have to decide whether this reduced model is a uh, better model to use in the predictions. So in that case actually in H note if you are going to use this model as the reduced model actually we are testing whether these missing parameters, the missing parameters beta naught beta beta 2 beta 4 beta 5 beta 6 whether these are equal to 0 or not now in this case we can ch take our if if uh, statistic that is we can consider um, the error sum of squares of of the our reduced model and subtract the error sum of square of the full model divided by p plus 1 minus k so in that k in that case uh, p is the number of parameters in the full model so uh, the number of independent variables in the full model so in that case you have 6 so 6 plus 1 is 7 minus k is the number of uh, parameters in our reduced model 
so in that case if you take the difference here uh, you can see uh, here uh, 6 plus 1 is uh, 7 and uh, 7 minus uh, you have 3 parameters in the reduce model 7 minus 3 is 4 so the difference between the para estimated values that is 4 and when it comes to the error sum of squares of this uh, full model divided by its degrees of freedom in minus p minus 1 so that we can do in this uh, we can formulate that one so uh, i'm going to just uh, discuss an example here so this is actually not one of my uh, example that that is it's not that uh, i have created this so this is one of the very common examples that we use to describe this uh, error sum of squares concept so it can be if you just google it and see the acl study case you can just find it out so i'm just going to uh, use that in order to elaborate this concept so here if uh, when it comes to uh, uh, this uh, acl study in the allen cognitive level study so there were two researchers uh, they wanted to investigate the relationship between this uh, ACL score that is a score which uh, measures the uh, psychopathology level right so it's uh, this study is related to psychiatry so they have selected 69 patient in a hospital psychiatry unit so their response variable y is the ACL score they have a particular score. If you, you can even obtain this data set if you just Google it and see. So here they have three uh, independent variables x1, x2 and x3. So one independent variable is uh, vocabulary uh, score and that is x1. Vocabulary score is x1 and you have x2 that is the abstraction score and then you have x3 that is score on uh, symbol digit modalities test so in this case you don't have to worry about what are these predictors but just uh, imagine you have your response variable as a score and this uh, score is depending on these three independent variables x1 x2 and x3 so we want to come up with a model in order to estimate this ACL score using these predictor variables in that case if we want we can use all these three variables so we can select what are the most important variables when it comes to uh, regression analysis so in this case if we uh, just uh, take uh, if you just take only one predictor variable like if you just take x1 as your predictor variable to predict uh, your response ACL we will see if you just take y uh, is equal to x1 right so in that case if you just obtain the ANOVA table we will see for the regression we have only one variable that is the one independent variable x1 and for the error just don't uh, consider about this lack of fit po error we will just talk about those things later right so here in your model just imagine you have the acl score and the intercept and only one x variable that is x1 so the regression equation would be now if you just uh, you can just up since you can obtain this data set you can just take it uh, import it into an excel sheet and then use r and try to fix the regression equation and see whether you get the same output whether acl is equal to 4.225 plus 0 0.0298 times vocab ox1 so this is the uh, anova table uh, for this uh, model so you can see with the regression the degrees of freedom is 1 
and the sum of square is 2.691 and the mean square is 2.69 and the f value is 4.47 and when it comes to error degrees of freedom is 67 and here you have uh, sum of squares value mean square value all the values are given and let's imagine we are taking the same data set and we are going to select x1 that is the vocab variable and x3 the sdmt test value so we are going to select x1 and x3 as our independent variable and again we are going to come up with another model so if that is the case if you just uh, try to fix a regression model right if you just try to fit a regression model in that case you will see uh, the our ACL score is equal to 3.845 that is our intercept uh, minus 0 0.0068 um, and uh, then we have uh, plus 0 0.02979 times SDMT so here we have consider x1 and x3 and if you look at the first model there you have only x1 so if you look at the first model and then if you look at this model we the last model so this last model we can consider as the full model because the first model is nested in this so in this case we can use this uh, error sum of square concept in order to decide whether we are going to use this uh, uh, whether we are going to use the model with only one uh, independent variable or with uh, the model with only x1 or we are going to use the regression model with x3 x3 and x1 so we can use this uh, error sum of square concept so i will show you now as i told you when it, when we come from the full model to uh, the reduce model the error is it's increasing let's check it out so here now in our case this is our full model you can see our error is 31.2717 31.2717 is the error and let's see what is the um, error of the reduce model let's see the error of the reduce model right see if it comes to when it comes to the reduce model you can see error is 40.359 40.359 so if you just calculate the difference between this uh, these two errors right so i'll just write this is sum of square error now here what we do is how do we write this one uh, when we uh, when we write this extra sum of squares the extra sum of squares if you are talking about the error now in this case what has happened uh, x1 variable was already in the was already in the model and when it comes to the full model we have added x3 variable so i can write I can write like this this is the formal notation to use this is the extra sum of squares of error uh, that is in this case in the full model you have x3 and x1 both in the reduce model you have only x1 variable so how we write this uh, extra sum of square of errors that is given that x1 was in the model when we add x3 to the model the extra sum of squares is equal to the difference between these 
two error values so if you just write the difference between these two error values if you take the reduce model error that is uh, that was 40 something right so that was uh, 40.359 so in this case 40.359 minus if you take this one in the full model error is 31.2717 so if you just calculate the difference that is close to 3.0873 now if you just check the regression sum of square sum of square regression or you can just write it in the other way rss so here in our full model again we have x3 and x1 so i'm going to consider what will happen when we add x3 to the model given that x1 was already there so let's check in the full model uh, the regression sum of squares of the full model is 11.7778 there are three sevens no and then let's check the error sum of squares of the uh, regression sum of squares of the full uh, reduce model and you can see when it comes to the reduce model the regression sum of squares is 2.691 2.691 so in this case you can add 2.691 so if you just uh, take the difference You can see that is again equal to 9.0868. So, more or less, both are the same. So, when you calculate the if, if, uh, statistic, you can just take the difference between the uh, regression sum of squares or you can come up with the difference between this error sum of squares. You get the same value. So, in this case, now the difference is 9.0868. 087 I have to divide this by the respective degrees of freedom so in this case if you take the full model you have how many parameters you have in the full model you have two independent variables and one uh, para constant so you have three parameters in the reduce model one independent variable and you have only one constant two parameters so three minus two it's one so you have to divide this by one the difference between the uh, degrees of freedoms so in f statistic this is your numerator so if that is not clear for you i'll just write in the full model you have three number of parameters minus in the reduced model two so this whole thing we have to divide by when you take the full model, what is the error sum of square of the full model? Here that is 31.2717. 31.2717 divided by n minus. Here n is you have 69 observations. n minus p minus 1. So p is the number of parameters in the full model. 3 minus uh, 1 here so in that case that is uh, 3 plus 1 is 4 69 minus uh, 4 that is 65 So in this case, I'll just show you, uh, just to show you the statistic calculation that we did it correctly. See, so here you have uh, n minus p minus one, right? So in this case, let's see. 
small change here so here the p is the number of x para x variables you have in the full model so that should be 2 here so in this case you have 69 minus 3 that is 66 so you have 31.2717 you have to divide by 66 so in that case f value that is equal to 9.087 divide by 0 0.474 so let's divide 9.087 you have to divide by 0 0.474 so that would be close to 9 this is close to 19.17 so this is the uh, test statistics so what we did first we considered our reduced model and we considered our full model and we calculated the extra sum of squares for that you can use the error sum of squares or the regression sum of squares and then we have to uh, divide that by the difference of degrees of freedoms in the two models and then we have to take the uh, in this case we have to take the uh, error sum of squares of the full model and divided by the respective degrees of freedom that is n minus p minus 1 where p is the number of uh, independent variables in the full model so here you have 19.17 so now we have calculated this test statistic right So now we can just check this, uh, we can check this uh, if, uh, test statistic with the table value uh, and then we can conclude whether to use this reduced model or whether to use the full model for our predictions. So I will just, uh, let me check with the, I'll show you the if table. Show you the if table here. So we have F table here. So let's check the table value from the F table. So if you just look at, uh, in this case, we can see the degrees of freedom which associated with the numerator is 1. And the degrees of freedom which associated with the uh, denominator is 66. So we have to find 1 from the numerator and 66 from the denominator. So, here we have 1 for, for the numerator and now we have to find 66 for the denominator. Let's see, 1 for the numerator. Yeah, so in this case we can see the, uh, the closest value that we can... Uh, read from the table for the denominator is 60 so we can select this and when it comes to uh, one for the numerator we have these ones and here if you take the alpha value so we have 0 0.05 as alpha so here the table value is equal to 4 and here from the calculated value we have 19.17 so we can see our test statistic is greater than the table value so this is that this is the f 
calculated value that is 19.17 this is greater than the uh, f table value so in that case we can reject our h note that is we can reject the reduce model and in this case we can conclude the best model is the full model that is the best model is to include x1 and x3 to uh, predict the acl level so this is how we use the extra sum of squares in order to determine whether a reduced model uh, or the full model is the best fit right so you can just add and you can just uh, Re, uh, just remove certain variables and check uh, what are the conclusions that you can get and by doing that uh, continuously you can uh, obtain the best fit for the given data set so i hope uh, that is clear with y'all uh, so you have to be practice with your data sets how to conduct this uh, error sum of squares and then you will be uh, you'll find this method is very easy even in the exam if i give you the outputs of the anova tables and if i ask you what is the best um, fit for this given data set you should be able to conduct this uh, i know uh, this uh, f test and find out the best fit for the given data set or you should be able to find out the most important variables in order to predict the response variable with the given output so i think i'm going to stop from this point uh, thank you very much